Images can do a lot of great things for your website. They can help you tell your brand story better and they can make your website more appealing to your visitors and readers. However, when you upload an image to your website in Squarespace, it can often be a little too big for the page itself and then you need to resize it. Now, instead of uh, downloading the image, editing it in a program like Canva or Photoshop, you can use built-in Squarespace features to uh, edit and resize the images. And that's what I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So I have here a blog uh, demo website on 7.1, but the method is pretty much the same for 7.0 websites. So I'm not going to cover, um, I'm not going to show you two different tutorials. You can follow the same steps regardless of which Squarespace version you're using because they are they function in the same way. So for this purpose, I'm just going to create a new page on our website. It's going to be a blank, blank page. So for this tutorial, I'm going to upload from an image from my computer. So I'm going to click Upload File and we're going to go to Downloads and I'm going to select this photo and as you can see when I upload it it's pretty big and it doesn't look very nice on my website so what can we do to make it smaller well first of all if you click on the image itself you'll notice that a gray dot appears on the border on the blue border here and if you drag the image you can basically make it somewhat smaller so you can resize the height of the image so if you find that the image is too tall, you can reduce that height by dragging this dot up and down. But however, that all that doesn't fix really the width of the image. In that case, what you can do is above the image, you can add a spacer block, two spacer blocks actually, and position those spacer blocks, blocks one next to each other. And then you can take the image and drag it in between those spacer blocks. What you can do then, you can drag the spacer blocks to adjust how big the image is. So you can make it now it's not taking up the entire width of the page, but it's placed in between those spacers. And this doesn't have to be exclusively a spacer block. You can do the same thing with the text block. So for example, we can get rid of this spacer like this, and we can use the text block that we have here. And let me add, uh, we're just going to add a title and make that heading two. What you can do now is Let's remove that spacer too so that we have the image at full size. What you can do now is you can take this image and drag it next to the text block like so when it appears. See when this line, blue line appears and extend down the length of the whole page. Just place the image there and now it we've made the image smaller. But if this is still too big for you, the next thing you can do is you can drag this block that you have on this side, whether it's a text block or a spacer block or any other block, you can drag it. You can hover with your mouse until this blue line appears and then you can drag the block uh, to make it bigger. You can also do the same with the image block itself. So you can drag it and make it bigger or make it super small like this. And this is the smallest it can get. So basically that is how you can resize the width of the image. And of course, if you would like uh, text and image like this, but you still think that the image is a little too big, or if you would like some space in between this block and this block, what you can do then is you can add a spacer block and then either place it in between these two blocks, like so, and then resize the spacer block so that either one of these blocks is bigger. And then of course, you can also add a spacer block on the size of the image block like this. And again, play around with the size of the spacer block and the image block to make the image bigger or smaller. Another thing that you can do is if you click on the image itself and then you click the edit button, if you go under design and if you choose a card layout, that will make the image smaller and it will also give you space to enter text. The same thing will happen if you choose the overlap or the collage layout for the image itself. The last thing that you can do is if you is you can click on this edit button and then if you click on the crop tool you can choose the crop of the image which can make it smaller. So you can keep the original aspect ratio here and then just drag the corners of the image to resize which part of the image you want to keep and you can move this crop uh, this highlighted portion around to select the best part of the image. Or you can choose, if we put this back and 
resize it, you can choose uh, these pre-made crops here. And again, once you find the one that you like, all you really have to do is click on save and that will save the image. Another thing that you can do is if you is you can flip the image horizontally and vertically and you can also rotate it by 90 degrees. And then you can also tilt the image to customize how it displays and to get the better angle for your image itself. And other options in the image editor are also you can adjust brightness. So you can make the image brighter or darker. You can play around with the contrast, saturation, sharpness, blur. You can even blur the images. You can increase the highlights or decrease them. And you can also increase or decrease shadows. And if at any point in time you're not happy with any of the changes, you can simply hit the reset button down here and it will undo all the changes that you've made. And lastly, we have the filters, which are somewhat similar to the filters you have on Instagram. So if you want to apply a unique layout to the image itself, you can choose one of these uh, pre-made filters and then you can adjust the strength of the filter below. So I'm just going to select none and then I'm going to click save. And now, as you can see, once the editor applies the changes, the image will be smaller. And then we can drag it next to the text like so and add whatever blocks we want on this side here. So basically, uh, there are three ways to add images to Squarespace. You can choose an image from your computer, you can select the pre-existing image from your library, or you can use the stock images from Unsplash or Getty. But keep in mind that uh, licensing stock images from Getty will cost $10 per image. This option select from library. So basically, if you've uploaded the image previously, you can reuse it on any uh, other pages on your site. And another thing to note is that if you use the built-in editor in Squarespace to edit your images, you will have two copy of the images. You will have the original image that you uploaded, and then you will also have the edited image. So that is something to keep in mind. And then if you click on the three dots, you can see the file name for the image, the type of the image, the dimensions, and the size and you can see when you've added it. And if you click on the image itself to select it, you can delete it. And then you can also select uh, or sort images by newest, oldest, by name, and you can change how the how you view the images. So you can have them in list mode or you can have them in a grid mode like this. And then if you know the image name, you can also search for it by the title. That is how you can work with the image library in Squarespace and how you can add images you've already uploaded to your site. And that's not the only thing that you can do with images in Squarespace. You can also use the new feature uh, that is found under the design options where you can crop them into different shapes. And I have a video that walks you through that process that I will uh, link to that you can go watch right now and see how that's done. And if you're still in the process of building your website, I have a free roadmap that walks you through the entire process step by step. So uh, be, you can download that if you go to ladesignstudio.com forward slash roadmap. And if you want to see more videos about Squarespace, uh, I have a whole playlist about blogging with Squarespace. So be sure to watch that uh, next. And that's it for today and I'll see you next time.